Whose book is this? Not mine. We got it. Great. Donna, come on. Uh, everybody good? Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for your patience. I apologize again for uh, for running late. Um, but uh, always, always, always a few extra details right before uh, any of these uh, press announcements. You're going to hear from a few folks. Uh, let me recognize again, as uh, you've come to, uh, as you've come to know them, uh, the Pope Five: uh, Everett Gillison, Desiree Peter Kimbell, Giselle Jones, uh, Sam Phillips, and Chief Inspector uh, Joe Sullivan, representing uh, the uh, five main individuals uh, who are responsible for. World Meeting of Families, preparations for the City of Philadelphia, and, of course, the Papal Visit. We're also, of course, and you'll hear from her in a second, uh, Donna Farrell, World Meeting of Families, Rob Wonderling, uh, the great president of the uh, Greater Philadelphia Chamber of Commerce, and our host today, uh, the one, the only, and one of my favorite places, uh, Mick Houston, uh, here, of course, at Jack's Firehouse. Um, Home of the uh, the bump and biscuits, uh, which I happen to enjoy. Um, but uh, as uh, was said just a second ago, uh, and this is uh, I think this is our first uh, first uh, papal press conference uh, outside of City Hall. And what better place to be than in Bill Greenlee's neighborhood? Uh, we were smart enough to come uh, to where uh, Councilman Bill Greenlee is, uh, Councilman at large, but also ward leader here. And we thank him. Uh, he is uh, always on the case, always paying attention uh, to what's going on, and always advocating for all of you, his many, many constituents. Um, we're particularly thrilled, uh, certainly, with uh, Rob Wonderling our president, uh, again, of the Greater Philadelphia Chamber of Commerce, and the many, many other business people who are here uh, with us uh, today, and uh, their presence and support is uh, significant uh, and very, very important. Again, our partners uh, in this work, first and foremost, the United States Secret Service, SEPTA, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, and Governor Wolf and his uh, administration, PATCO, DRPA, PennDOT, uh, and uh, many, many other agencies. This is our sixth uh, media briefing related to efforts uh, with regard to our planning for the World Meeting of Families, uh, Congress, and the visit uh, by uh, Pope Francis. Past briefings have focused on uh, issues of logistics, and rightfully so, because we want our residents, our businesses, and certainly uh, the many joyful pilgrims uh, from near and far to be prepared. But we cannot forget that the World Meeting of Families is an event that, while spiritual in nature, uh, is also meant to be joyful. That's you, Philadelphia. It's meant to be joyful. Today's focus is on cultivating some of that joy, engagement, and pride all across the city, the region, the state, and quite frankly, uh, certainly the United States of America. In a little less than five weeks, we will all be on the world stage hosting multitudes of people and His Holiness Pope Francis. We have a great story to tell about our city and our region, including, of course, Jack's Firehouse, which was an early success story of uh, the many outreaches that we've made to businesses across the city. I want to personally thank Mick Houston, who's been a friend and supporter for a long, long period of time, and Jack's Firehouse Restaurant for their mm -hmm. hospitality today and for embracing the moment and declaring 
that Jax is open in Philadelphia for the visit of Pope Francis. Now, Mick has already asked, and I've had to uh, do my best in uh, dancing around the question. Of course, he has asked, since we're having the press conference, will Pope Francis uh, come to uh, Jack's Firehouse? I will talk to His Holiness about uh, his uh, culinary interests and see uh, what we can do. Uh, in the meantime, Jack's Firehouse is reflective of the spirit of the Fairmount neighborhood. All it is uh, is one uh, great business uh, and a great business owner here and all around this area, and they have stepped up in a very significant way. The London Grill, Rembrandt's, Mugshots, the aptly named Bishop's Collar, and so many, many more right here in the neighborhood. They have uh, the past experience of, at times, being closed to major events on the Ben Franklin Parkway, but equally important, if not more so, they also know what to do to make things happen and get business done. The City of Philadelphia's Business Resource Center has received now upwards of 250 calls from businesses and so far helping to answer key questions about the city's plans and individual businesses' plans related to the papal visit. I think we're still running at about an 80 plus percentage rate on just being able to answer many of those inquiries as the calls come in to the Business Resource Center and again, as is our practice, more complicated issues or challenges that come in get reviewed uh, nightly uh, by a team of folks to then work with that business on uh, maybe some specifics related uh, to uh, their challenges uh, that they are anticipating. We've been very successful in getting those answers to the business owners because that's what we do with the Office of Business Services every day in our city. The city's concierge service for businesses year-round. We help businesses succeed. Mm -hmm. In fact, I'm proud to announce that a very well-known business has worked with the city to accommodate limited deliveries and therefore has also decided uh, to remain open. That would be, of course, the one, the only, the incomparable Reading Terminal Market at 12th and Silver. I want to acknowledge, again, a longtime friend uh, and uh, a person who was formerly in the administration, Anuj Gupta, uh, who is now the executive director of the Reading Terminal Market, and he's been working with our folks the Reading Terminal Market open for business during the papal visit. Some businesses are gearing up and getting ready, uh, but we also need to help everyone connect with that spirit for this upcoming event. One other news item before uh, Donna Farrell comes up to the podium regarding alternative ride services uh, uh, beyond um, uh, taxis. Uh, the legal Uber, that's the uh, Philadelphia Parking Authority licensed limo partners, also known as black cars, will be given the same access inside the traffic box as medallion taxis. We previously announced uh, that taxis and now uh, the Uber black cars uh, will be allowed in the traffic box until 2 a.m. on Saturday morning uh, and, um, and beginning at 3 a.m. on Monday morning uh, for those folks who are then, of course, trying to leave Philadelphia maybe for an early flight or train service. In addition, Uber Wave, that's W-A-V, that's a wheelchair accessible vehicle. There are also PUC licensed uh, paratransit partners will have the same access in the traffic box as, uh, the, um, as taxis uh, and uh, SEPTA's CCT service. And there is no restriction crossing the traffic uh, box border for them. These arrangements have been made because we want to be as accommodating uh, to our visitors and citizens as possible. Now let me turn the podium over to Donna uh, to introduce an exciting new campaign that will engage businesses and residents alike and help remind all of us what this visit and the World Meeting of Families is all about and meant to be. A very spiritual, joyful celebration of the city of brotherly love and sisterly affection, the only time the World Meeting of Families has ever been in the United States of America and the Vatican chose our great city. Donna? Thank you, Mayor Nutter, our incredible partners in the city of Philadelphia, and all of you for being with us here today at Jack's Firehouse Restaurant. I want to take a moment right now to especially thank Mick Houston, uh, the owner of Jack's, for his unbelievable hospitality. Um, I have no doubt that anyone who chooses to spend time in Fairmount on September 26th and 27th will have a fabulous time here, one of Philadelphia's great neighborhoods, right? 
Pope Francis' arrival in Philadelphia is just one month from today. Right. One month! <laughs> Our World Meeting of Families President and Chairman of the Board, Bob Sharoufoli, is here, the official timekeeper of the World Meeting of Families. It's even less time until the Congress begins. How many days, Bob? 28. 28 days. 28 days. We have spent much of the summer addressing the very necessary and important security and logistics planning that comes with a national special security event. First time ever in Philadelphia. And we are so grateful to all of our partners, including the U.S. Secret Service and the Philadelphia Police Department for their 24-7 work. But now's the time for all of us to get excited, right? Right. Now is the time to prepare in a different way. We need to turn our attention to getting ready for a memorable, wonderful, and fun event. We talk a lot about the 1979 visit. It's been a touchstone for comparison in recent weeks. But frankly, there really is no comparison. St. John Paul II said one outdoor mass here 36 years ago in the midst of an eight-city tour. There was no world meeting of families. There was no two-day visit with mass at the cathedral, an address on immigration and religious freedom at Independence Hall, a festival of families, or any host of the things that Pope Francis will do here in Philadelphia from September 26th through the 27th. There was no capstone moment of a historic and perhaps only U.S. visit. But in 2015 there is. And while that means, of course, there will be changes from 1979, it doesn't mean that the experience of being part of something special does. We would be remiss, we would really miss out, if we didn't seize the moment, not just as a city, but as individuals. With all due love and respect to our TV friends, and we do love you, um, do you know anyone who fondly recalls the visit of St. John Paul II in terms of watching it at home on their TV? Well, you think about that question. I come here today to say that now is the time for all of us to declare, I'll be there, because this is not a moment to be missed. Agreed. Today, I am so proud to announce the I'll Be There campaign, which aims to energize and excite businesses and residents in our five-county Philadelphia region, as well as South Jersey and Delaware, in advance of Pope Francis' arrival here on Saturday, September 26th, again, one month from today. I'll Be There is a campaign rooted in the public declaration of participation in this historic event for Philadelphia. To start, we are reimagining the center city area from South Street to Girard Avenue and the Delaware River to 38th Street as the Francis Festival Grounds. <laughs> That's right. That's right. We are banning the use of a certain term containing the, wor containing the words traffic and box. <laughs> Why, you ask? Because this event is not about what you can't do, but all about what you can do in our great city. And yes, and not just on the weekend of Pope Francis' visit, but in the 10 days leading up to it. The Francis Festival, as we are deeming this time, is meant to be a celebratory, fun, and welcoming experience for the anticipated crowds, crowds from around the world, of course, who are already planning to attend, but also for local residents, all of whom are invited to join in this historic global event. And before we get asked about colored lines and perimeters, it's important to address a few misperceptions. First, there is no security checkpoint for those entering the festival grounds via South Street, Girard Avenue, Columbus Boulevard, or 38th Street. U.S. Secret Service security checkpoints will be in very close proximity only to the Benjamin Franklin Parkway and Independence Mall. There will be food and beverage zones, as well as official retail vendors in the festival grounds, not just on the other side of the security checkpoints. 
That's in addition to the restaurants like Jack's and the convenience stores that will be open. Those attending the festival will not, will not need to go through a U.S. Secret Service checkpoint to get to these official vendors. Independent food truck vendors will also be available within the festival grounds through the coordination of Aramark, which is the official food and beverage retail provider for the world meeting. So if you love night market, this is for you. This is really important. SEPTA and PATCO will deliver riders directly into the festival grounds on Saturday, September 26th and Sunday the 27th, right in. SEPTA has availability across all of its operations, including the regional rail service from its 18 operating stations. If you're taking SEPTA to Center City for the Francis Festival, riders will not have to walk more than one mile to access the Benjamin Franklin Parkway or Independence Hall, the two main event locations. And if you want to feel the full excitement of the city, then let's embrace a favorite slogan from yesteryear, Philly's more fun when you stay overnight. Despite many reports to the contrary, there is still hotel availability in Center City, or as Archbishop Chaput might say, there's still room at the inn. Staying at a hotel for this event puts you right in the heart of the Francis Festival. So think about doing that. Now, let me share a brief overview of the many initiatives associated with the I'll Be There campaign, which will be supplemented by print, radio, and broadcast public service announcements over the course of the next month. First, hashtag open in PHL kits. This coming Monday, August 31st, street teams will personally deliver hundreds of open and PHL kits to businesses across the city of Philadelphia. Now included in these kits will be Welcome Pope Francis signage, a window cling, branded buttons, I'll hold it up again, businesses, business resources, and additional information about how businesses can get involved and engage local and international visitors. And we are excited to preview some of that creative today. First, the window signs. All right. Welcome, Pope Francis. I'll be there. We know, we know the Pope will be there. And second, an I'll be there button. Nice, nice. And Mr. Mayor, I would like to present you with the very first, and I do mean first, buttons for I'll Be There. And no worries, everyone else, we have them. We have more. Thank you. Thank you. Kind of look like a Boy Scout. Little <laughs> <laughs> badges and everything. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Additionally, open and PHL kits will be available for pickup at the following locations through Friday, September 4th. 30th Street Station, the African American Chamber of Commerce, the Greater Philadelphia Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, Independence Visitor Center, Philadelphia International Airport, the Pennsylvania Convention Center, Reading Terminal Market. So we encourage everyone to get their open and PHL kits and we thank so many of our partners who are here today who are making that possible. For those who want to come to this event but might not wish to go through the security checkpoints at all, we understand and we want you to know you can still be part of this event. There will be 40 jumbotrons strategically placed across the Francis Festival grounds. 40 jumbotrons where you can see everything that's happening. From the Festival of Families stage, and the, which is also the Papal Altar on Eakins Oval, to City Hall's porticos, to South and North Broad Streets, jumbotrons will begin programming on Saturday the 26th at 6 a.m. A comprehensive map of the jumbotron positions will be coming very soon, but it's important to share with you today that the following papal events will be shown live on all 40 of the jumbotrons across the Francis Festival grounds. 
On Saturday the 26th, everyone at the Francis Festival will see live on the Jumbotrons the arrival of Pope Francis at Atlantic Aviation in Philadelphia at 9.30 a.m. The Cathedral Mass celebrated by Pope Francis at 10.30 a.m. Pope Francis address at Independence Hall at 4.45 p.m. And still on Saturday, the Festival of Families, 7.30 p.m. That's when the Pope arrives. There's programming all the hours before that. On Sunday, September 27th, the Papal Mass will be shown at 4 o'clock p.m. And we want people to know that the Papal events that will be on the Jumbotrons aren't the only events occurring within the festival grounds. There is going to be significant, significant pre-programming, hours of it, at both Independence Hall and on the Benjamin Franklin Parkway. As part of this Saturday's pre-Festival of Families Entertainment, the World Meeting of Families is excited to announce the addition of a second performance mm -hmm. stage on Logan Circle on the Ben Franklin Parkway. Entertainment there will kick off Saturday morning, early Saturday afternoon, right after Pope Francis Mass at the Cathedral. The performance acts for Independence Hall, Eakins Oval Stage, and the Logan Circle Stage will be announced within the next two weeks. In addition, we want every person who comes to the Francis Festival to have a piece of history. To that end, for all of those entering the festival grounds along South Street, Girard Avenue, Columbus Boulevard, or 38th Street, the World Meeting of Families will provide holy medals and or prayer cards that will serve as a remembrance of one's participation in this historic event. Volunteers will greet and distribute these keepsakes as a token of gratitude for the participation of the attendee and then in turn, those gifts can be blessed by Pope Francis. They will be blessed by him when he offers his formal blessing at the conclusion of the events of the Festival of Families and the Papal Mass. Doesn't matter where you're standing on the festival grounds. We're also announcing today a special passport program. We all know that one of the best ways to show you were there is to snap it. Through Instagram and Twitter, we're encouraging participants of the Francis Festival to create a virtual passport of their participation by sharing photographs of their patronage at local businesses displaying the open and PHL material. Post that tag or mention a participating business and include hashtag Pope in Philly and hashtag Rome contest and you will enter a festival participant, enter as a festival participant into a sweepstakes and you can win a family vacation to Rome, Italy, courtesy of the World Meeting of Families, Philadelphia 2015. And as a thank you for all the local businesses making the effort to be open in PHL and displaying their Philadelphia pride, these local merchants will become eligible to win a trip to Rome when they post a picture of their poster or window cling on display by Friday, September 18th, including hashtag open in PHL and hashtag Rome contest. So a family and a local business will win a trip to Rome. This is a virtual passport that just might result in some folks using their real passports. We're going to announce the official uh, sweepstakes rules and details this coming week. And last, the World Meeting of Families is getting ready to launch a new transportation webpage on worldmeeting2015.org during the week of August 31st. These changes are going to help those traveling to the Francis Festival to better understand all of the transportation options available and encourage planning to best meet the many scenarios that local residents and businesses need to figure out regarding transportation. As you can see, we're working incredibly hard and fast to address all of the questions and concerns that we've been hearing. We hear you. And we can't promise we can solve every problem and do it all, but we will try. I hope our message today is clear. Come, be part of history. Let's not lose sight of the fact that this is a moment we will never have again. Let's come together in joy and community for the Francis Festival. And let's all commit to being there on September 26th and 27th. I know I'll be there 
and I know Mayor Nutter will be, there, be there, and our partners will be there. I hope you'll be there too. Thank you. Donna is fired up. A um, couple last things uh, before we uh, before we go into the Q and A. Uh, one, um, I uh, was kicking myself back here. Um, I talked about a number of the businesses uh, in the area uh, and the great work that they do uh, here in Fairmount, uh, but I'm also looking at one right across the street and certainly want to recognize the tremendous uh, activity that goes on uh, with the tours at the Eastern State Penitentiary, and I want to thank them uh, very, very much. Uh, second, um, I, in the previous, uh, previous press conferences, I've been asked, uh, and there seems to be some uh, activity out in the social media world about uh, bicycles. Um, that's, I mean, other than walking, um, that's probably one of the uh, easiest things uh, to, uh, to deal with. Bicycles are allowed everywhere except the secure perimeter. That is the most, that is the closest area to uh, the Ben Franklin Parkway. It is the most secure area. It's the area where folks have to actually go through uh, the uh, magnetometers that uh, uh, Donna was talking about earlier. Uh, and I think for obvious reasons, uh, there will be no bicycles in uh, the secure perimeter. But even in the uh, secure vehicle perimeter, uh, bicycles are allowed. They're obviously allowed all over the traffic box. And again, uh, as the same concern with regard to motorists and vehicles, even though vehicles are allowed to travel around uh, and within the, uh, uh, Donna, I'll, I'll reorient myself on the uh, uh, Francis, Francis, Festival? Francis Festival grounds. Um, formerly known as a traffic box. Um, <laughs> thank you. Okay, I'm working on it. Um, bicycles uh, certainly are allowed uh, within uh, the what we call the traffic box over on the city side. Um, but again, similar with uh, cars and other vehicles, just you have to be mindful of the fact that there will be thousands and thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, and hundreds of hundreds of thousands of people on the streets. And just as it will be difficult for a car to make it through, uh, it could be a bit of a challenge even on a bicycle when you have that many people out. So bikes are allowed everywhere except the secure perimeter. Uh, and, um, but just be mindful that there are uh, citizens, uh, pilgrims, uh, folks walking around and you don't want to hit somebody or get into a confrontation. With that in mind, uh, be glad to try to answer any questions from uh, the news media about today's announcements. And Donna, fantastic set of announcements. Uh, that, was a, that was a real action-packed uh, action uh, series of announcements, and we could not be more proud of our partnership again with the World Meeting of Families Philadelphia and the great work that Donna and her entire team are doing. Questions? Oh, it's got, oh yeah, okay. Um, uh, he's not just here because he has a great handshake and a smile, um, and my fault. Uh, the president of the Greater Philadelphia Chamber of Commerce, uh, Rob Wonderling, is going to speak, and there are probably a couple other speakers. So, sorry about that. No worries. No worries. Thank you. No worries, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I don't think I have the power to suggest. Well, I can suggest anything. I just can't make it so. I think uh, the Honorable Michael Nutter, Mayor, of the city of Philadelphia should have the jumbo remote control that controls the jumbo trons. <laughs> I don't think so. I <laughs> love it. So your Greater Philadelphia Chamber of Commerce is not quite as old as the city of Philadelphia and not nearly as old as the Catholic Church. But we are in our 214th year. And through our history, we've always been here. We've always been open for business and on behalf of this city and this region's business community we're absolutely passionate excited and prepared to welcome with open arms all those attending the Francis Festival now I must say that what has made this city great and what has endured this business community for many years is what maybe sometimes we take for granted and that is the spirit of entrepreneurship that is looking at every opportunity as just that an opportunity and I know our business community feels no different today than they did in the past or even 214 years ago that 
the Festival of Francis, this great gathering, this world-renowned event, is an opportunity to serve pilgrims, it's an opportunity to serve patrons, it's an opportunity for enterprises in this city and this region to thrive, to grow, and to prosper. We have about 170,000 enterprises in this region, employing about 3 million individuals, and within the festival zone, over 3,000 enterprises that are looking forward to this opportunity. I want to applaud the leadership of Bob Sarufli and the World Meeting of Family Organization, and Meyer Michael Nutter, and a host of partners that have been vigilant in providing information to businesses and citizens alike about what is before us. And I took the occasion this morning, Mr. Mayor, to call that business hotline, to call that center on behalf of a family member of mine who is an entrepreneur and looking forward to the possibilities. And I must say that the gentleman I spoke to was well informed, very courteous, answered all of my questions on behalf of my family member, and I think most notably when I started asking questions about the details of the event itself, he didn't put me in 1-800-PURGATORY <laughs> or move me on to another website associated with the World Meeting of Families. He answered every World Meeting of Family a question and back through what this city government can do to provide services for enterprises in this city. So I was one of those 250 calls. By the way, about a half hour before the appointed hour of operation of your business center. So I know I can speak for our close to 5,000 members representing 600,000 employees here in this city and this region that we are indeed ready. We're chomping at the bit. There's not a moment to lose. Thank you. That's fantastic, Rob. I am Varsovia Fernandez, President and CEO of your Greater Philadelphia Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. And we represent all these entrepreneurial Latino businesses in the Greater Philadelphia region that are going to be looking forward to welcoming Pope Francis to Philadelphia. We are all going to be at the festival. Rob, I'm going to compete with you today. I have one of our small Latino businesses here who is part of those 250 phone calls. And it is truly amazing how quickly the city of Philadelphia came through with this to make sure that we all receive services as organizations, as Philadelphia businesses, as minority businesses. We've been taking advantage of the opportunities that this amazing event is bringing to our region, to our city. And we are truly happy to be here today to tell you Por favor, ven a ver al Papa Francisco. Please be with us. I will be there. I hope you are there too. Good afternoon. My name is Stephen Scott Bradley. I'm chairman of the African American Chamber of Commerce. Also, I'm a business owner in Center City down at Fort and Chestnut. And African American Chamber of Commerce has been part of the planning process. We've been working with the Welcome Committee, working with the Volunteer Committee, making sure that this event reflects the demographics of the city. And our members are aware of the opportunities for vendings and welcoming people and making sure that this event is reflective of all the demographics of Philadelphia, not only as citizens, but as business owners. So we're looking for this opportunity, and I will be there, and I hope you will be there also. Thank you for allowing us to be a part. Let me also thank a couple other of our uh, hospitality partners, certainly Jack Ferguson, PHL CVB, a uh, great leader uh, in uh, our city, and Ed Gross uh, from the Greater Philadelphia Hotel Association. Um, I don't have uh, numbers and I can't directly help you in this, uh, but uh, it is certainly my understanding that there are uh, hotel rooms available uh, in, uh, in the marketplace uh, and uh, folks should take advantage uh, of uh, those opportunities. Uh, this might be uh, 30 days in, 
Uh, there might be uh, some pretty, uh, pretty snazzy deals out there. Uh, and uh, we have some of the best hotel stock anywhere in the United States of America. So uh, we're all about the promotion and marketing of our great city. We want folks to come, enjoy, have a great time. You'll get around. So Jerry and the team uh, from SEPTA in the back, uh, other than uh, your cab service uh, until 2 o'clock in the morning, uh, no one's going to get you closer than SEPTA uh, to uh, where you're trying to get to, and uh, you'll be hearing more about uh, uh, activities with regard to SEPTA uh, in the future uh, as well. I think now, so let me, let me turn around. I think now uh, we are. <laughs> so I turn around. So I get the I get the go sign from Desiree and from Meg. I know uh, that we are actually now ready uh, for uh, for the Q and A uh, as uh, the two folks who are really in charge uh, tell me what to do. Uh, to the news media, any questions? Well, uh, the real credit uh, for this, uh, so I take I have no real credit uh, involved in, in uh, much of what was announced today. I mean, we're talking all the time. We're constantly thinking about uh, different things. So I think the really, really short answer is it is not in any way, shape, or form a response to any of the things that you talked about. And it's really about more creativity, listening to people, hearing uh, uh, how folks want to get uh, actively engaged and involved. There was always a plan for uh, more near in as we got closer time. I mean, it's not a coincidence that we're 30 days out and talking about some of these other enhancements. But, you know, in many, many of these meetings, different ideas come up and we say, hey, that sounds like fun or that sounds good or let's uh, let's do that. We want people to really enjoy this and experience it. They have all of the, you know, traffic information, Francisville, Fra Francisville, it's a neighborhood, uh, France, Francis Festival grounds, traffic box, whatever you want to call it. Um, but, um, you know, we've had, uh, you know, we've had, um, I mean, I took a, at the Stevie Wonder pop-up concert uh, the other day, someone handed me their Pope Francis doll. Well, you know, I guess, I don't know, three weeks ago, a month ago, uh, we did all the uh, materials that are available uh, for sale. The one pin uh, that I have, uh, which is, you know, appropriately sized and all that, but now there's something else. So, I mean, there'll be new and different things as we get uh, closer uh, to the event, but no. In response to anything in particular, I mean, I think we've moved through a lot of uh, a lot of that stuff. But like I said before, we don't write the stories. We just give the information. You all have to decide how you want to cover them, what you want to say, what you want to write. You've got the ink. We just read them. Well, there, the question is, did this come up in the past week? I mean, was this always planned, or did this, this did come up in the trepidation of people not coming into town? So um, it did not come up uh, in the past week. There's been a discussion going way back to uh, Rome. Uh, which was months ago, about some of the kinds of things uh, that we might want to do. But I think, quite frankly, uh, if we were talking a few weeks ago about uh, buttons and opportunities for contests and a bunch of other things before dealing with the real substance of how am I going to get there, what's the traffic route, what's going on with SEPTA, what about the Ben Franklin Bridge, uh, you know, secure areas, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, we have had a game plan for a long, long period of time. We've rolled it out, I believe, in um, you know, a timely fashion. We can talk about the when and the how and, and uh, you know, some constraints that we had early on. But these kinds of things that we're talking about here today, we talked about months ago. It's really about the timing of how you release uh, information. I think uh, if we had talked about this, uh, these kinds of things four months ago and not had a traffic plan, you would have looked at us like we had, you know, three heads or something. Yeah. You said the Reading Terminal Market has decided to stay open. They had expressed some concerns about deliveries. Can you say what exactly the city did to help them decide to make that decision? Are they allowed to make we work with them on a delivery plan. Uh, and so, as we are with any number of businesses, uh, probably, I mean, the Reading Terminal Market is here uh, today, and I think that is a part of a significant part of uh, today's announcement. Probably in within the week, uh, we'll actually be able to talk in more detail about both issues of deliveries to virtually all of the businesses in the Francis Festival grounds, um, as well as uh, commercial trash pickup. Uh, we're literally finishing up some of the details on that and some maps and, and other things. So 
I don't want to get in. I don't want to get ahead of uh, ahead of myself uh, in uh, in that regard. But those are the kinds of things that the Business Resource Center has been working with businesses on. That the emergency management, Sam Phillips and her team, or Everett or Desiree, uh, Giselle and and um, Chief Inspector Sullivan. Those are the kinds of things that they've been getting into. And we think that we've pretty much solved. Uh, most of the challenges that any of the businesses uh, were uh, concerned about. The other part of this reality is for many, many uh, folks, especially in the hospitality community, uh, as I understand it, uh, more oftentimes than not, they usually get their big delivery on Friday, uh, not necessarily on Saturday. And some of the distribution companies uh, actually don't even deliver, uh, usually on Saturdays. Uh, but this, uh, these arrangements that we're making is really to help ensure whatever your normal Friday delivery is, if you're really anticipating a lot of crowds, that you kind of get almost an extra one uh, you know, leading into Saturday that you normally uh, would not even have uh, the opportunity for. So we just want to make sure that folks uh, have even a uh, little extra stuff. But in the next few days, we'll be able to talk about uh, both uh, deliveries uh, for all the businesses in the, uh, in the traffic box, as well as uh, commercial trash pickup. Yeah, I'm sorry, Julie. Um, we heard that the Pope-mobile has arrived uh, in the States. Uh, do you know yet um, if there is any parade plan or if there's a plan for him to go, say, from um, the Parkway to, into, to City Hall or to Independence Hall? So, a couple of things. One, um, I was not aware that the uh, Pope Mobile uh, had arrived. I did not get uh, did not get that memo. Um, it is uh, I, the one thing I can assure you: it's not here. Uh, if if it is in the United States of America, it's not here. Um, just as an aside, I did have a wonderful opportunity uh, when we were in uh, Rome. Uh, I guess just in June, uh, to uh, stand next to uh, the uh, the Pope Mobile and uh, and get a photo. Um, you know, I, I apparently. Uh, um, you know, some of the ideas about uh, security may be slightly different uh, between uh, Rome and the United States of America. The vehicle was literally just in an alcove. No one was standing near it. It's a very nice Mercedes um, and, uh, uh, you know, all, uh, all white, I think, with a little red trim. Um, so, one, I have no idea where the, where the boat mobile is. Second, um, I am not aware at the moment of uh, any uh, particular uh, plan uh, with regard to the movement of uh, the vehicle uh, and, uh, and His Holiness uh, Pope Francis. Uh, and obviously, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's pretty significant uh, security-related uh, information, uh, much like uh, people generally would not be talking about how President Obama uh, is going to move around uh, Philadelphia. That is uh, of the highest level of, of security uh, from a detail standpoint and uh, is, uh, uh, you're probably right on the edge of, uh, you know, violation of federal law uh, to get in discussion about uh, head of state's actual movement uh, within the city. So, but I have no idea where the boat mobile is. And no parade in I have no information with regard to a parade. Yes. Okay. I mean, that was 36 years ago. I mean, the, the world has changed a little bit. I, I have no information with regard to uh, South Broad Street um, in that regard. None. Yes? Um, I was thinking about sending them to your house. Um, <laughs> And um, we, we have made uh, uh, special uh, provisions uh, with regard to uh, an area uh, right outside your house uh, for all those protesters to uh, gather. Uh, people are pretty excited about that, uh, and we've already given them a permit. So good luck with that. Um, no, no one has contacted me. Uh, I'm not aware that the team has been contacted about protesters. Uh, you know, more often times than not, uh, one or two things happen. Either people don't notify us, um, and, you know, this is the United States of America, so somebody's probably protesting somewhere about something. Um, and on the, or on the other hand, some do contact us uh, closer uh, to an event. They might want to be in a particular place. Uh, we'd have to get into permits. Uh, depending on where it is, they may or may not be able to be at that spot because, you know, depending on where they are in terms of secure uh, perimeter. But I am not aware at the moment of uh, uh, requests for uh, designated area for protest. Not exactly sure what you would protest Pope Francis about, but okay. But it's a free country. Any other questions? Anything else? So let me see if I can do this. 
can we give um, Mick and the folks here at uh, Jack's Firehouse uh, another big, big round of applause? <laughs> Mick, thank you very, very much. Keep it up. Um, so, any other questions? Is that it? All right, fantastic. We're going to be there. Make sure you're there. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.